Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us see GSM communication and GSM system architecture. In the previous video, we have seen first generation and second generation concepts in wireless telecommunication network. This GSM is a part of second generation. In second generation, global system for mobile communication is the European standard which is developed, which is replaced 1G we can say. So the replacement of 1G is 2G. In 2G, we are going to use this GSM, which is developed in Europe. And this also uses two bands. Two bands in the sense, one for uplink from the mobile station to the base station. Another band for downlink from base station to the mobile station. This will be called as a duplex communication. And as we seen in the previous video itself, this 2G uses the digital communication, where the voice will be transferred as a digital signal. So voice channel is digitized here also and compression techniques is introduced in 2G. So the data is compressed to a 13 kbps digital signal. What do you mean by 13 kbps here? It is 13 into 1000 bits per second. So kilo in the sense that is 1000. So bits per second is the data rate we can consider. So 13 kbps is the digital signal which is a compressed version of the voice signal. Here you can observe in this diagram, this will be called as a multi-frame which is taking 120 millisecond for transmission. This multi-frame will be consisting of 26 sub-frames. So 26 frames will be considered as a one multi-frame. In a single frame, we will be having 8 slots which are multiplexed together. Here you can see 8 slots which is represented as an array here. This single slot will be consisting of 156.25 bits. This is what the data we are transmitting in one slot. Why it is represented as, as slot means it is using a frequency division multiplexing method. So these eight slots are multiplexed together to create a FDM frame that is frequency division multiplexing method. And there are 26 frames here combined to form a multi frame. And for the medium access control, medium access control in the sense channel access control, this GSM is going to use TDMA as well as FDMA scheme. And there is a large amount of overhead in TDMA that is what 114 bits are generated by adding extra error control bits also. So this 114 bits will be consisting of user data and the error control bits which is required for correction at the receiver. So here the reuse factor we can say it is 1 divided by 3 and GSM used 76% of users worldwide. So GSM is one of the popular technology in 2G technique where 76% of the users throughout the world they will be they are using GSM. So in one slot you can observe here which is uh, given as 156.25 bits. This means it is consisting of a user data plus error control bits plus TDMA control bits. Out of this 156.25, 114 bits are user data and error control bits. Out of this 114, 65 are user data. So this is how a one slot will be consisting of the data and such eight slots will be grouped together using a frequency division multiplexing method. And there are two phases the GSM is introduced. In the first phase, in the year 1990, it is comes into picture. This is named as GSM 900. Why it is 900 means it is using 900 megahertz band. In the previous video, we have seen 800 megahertz band. 800 megahertz in the sense uplink and downlink frequencies are near to 800 means 860 or 820, 25 uh, megahertz of bandwidth which we have seen in the previous video. Similarly here also this phase 1 will be using a 900 megahertz band means the megahertz of frequencies after this 900 where we can have only voice communication. This phase 1 is supporting only voice communication. In 1993, so the technology is evolved uh, from 1990 to 93, where 33 GSM networks were installed in 22 countries. It is able to uh, reach 22 countries by this time. So GSM networks were introduced or installed in these 22 countries. 
Then what is phase 2? Phase 2 is introduced in 1995. So the GSM standard it is 1800. GSM 1800 is the name they have given. Why it is given as 1800 means it is using 1800 megahertz band. 1000 mega 800 megahertz band in the sense it is the frequencies which they are using for uplink as well as downlink is after 1800 megahertz of frequency. This supports GSM 1800 supports voice as well as video and data which increase the number of subscribers throughout the world. At the time of 1997 GSM 1900 is introduced that is using 1900 megahertz frequency. This is commonly used in US. So this GSM is a most popular standard which consisting of 22 to 50 million subscribers for new cellular telephone as well as the communication equipment. Next let us see GSM system architecture. How actually the architecture of GSM communication will be? This GSM system architecture what you can see here in the diagram consisting of three parts. The first one is the mobile station part. The second one is base station subsystem part and the third one is network switching subsystem part. Now let us see what actually these three. First one is mobile system. Mobile system is a handheld device that will be generally called as a mobile phone. This consisting of a hardware as well as software installed inside. It is needed for the communication through a mobile network. This mobile station will also be consisting of a device called SIM card that is subscriber identity module. So mobile station or a mobile phone is a device which will be having hardware and software with that we will be having a device called SIM. So totally we call it as a mobile station and then we will be having a base station that will be represented as base subsystem. This is mobile station which is connected with the SIM card here you can see and this communicates continuously with a tower that will be called as base subsystem. In this base subsystem again there are two modules one is BTS, BTS in the sense it is base transceiver station and another device here we have is base station controller. So generally what we say as a base station as a tower which will be consisting of two parts one is BTS that is base transceiver section another one is a control section that is base station controller. This BTS consisting of equipment that communicates with a mobile phone. Whatever the signals we are transmitting from the mobile phone that will be communicated to a device through BTS since it is having a transmitter as well as receiver. Transceiver in the sense it consisting of both transmitter and receiver module inside. Combiningly we call it as transceiver. This do the transmission as well as reception of signals. And this BSC consisting of the controlling device or the controller we can say to allocate the necessary time slots between the BTS as well as the next device that is MSC. MSC is responsible for the call uh, establishment, call release, handoff and all. So in between BTS and MSC the controlling function will be done by BSC that is base station controller. Next we need to understand what is network subsystem. We have seen mobile station and then we have seen BSS where we shall see this is what is network subsystem. Network subsystem is one of the important thing here we need to understand. This NSS is core of the network that tracks the location of the callers to enable the delivery of cellular services. This include five functional units. There are five functional units come under network subsystem. First one is mobile switching center that what we call as MSC. This MSC performs the call setup, call release, call tracking and call forwarding and also the SMS. Whatever the functionality we are going to expect, expect from a cellular provider that will be handled by this mobile switching center. As we seen in the previous video this MSC is going to search for the uh, mobile station to establish a call. So once the user dials the number the, the signal communicated from the base station to the MSC and through the MSC it is searching for the person B whom person A is ringing. So this MSC is responsible for call related issues like call setup, release, 
call tracking as well as call forwarding and also the sms then we have the second device called home location register generally we call it as hlr this hlr as the name itself says home location register it is a database consisting of the data regarding the subscribers authorized to use the global system for mobile communication means how we can understand this hlr means suppose a user present in karnataka will be registered to hlr means the person who is using the service of any cellular network in karnataka will be called as a home user so this user will be registered in home location register database this home location register will be having the information of all the users present in the home location that is we can consider as a state then what is visitor location register that is vlr this vlr is going to be used it is also a database that contains the temporary information of the subscribers suppose if any person come from the other state this is other state something like andhra pradesh suppose this person is using the cellular network present in karnataka then he need to register in a database of visitor location register here also as it says as the name itself says visitor location register this register consisting of a database of visitors which is registered in the other locations like other states this need to be registered before assigning a communication channel that's why vlr is going to be used this vlr is going to be function when there is a person communicating in roaming this roaming functionality provided by the network and this kind of roaming activity done by the visitor location register database and then we have equipment identity register that is eir this eir is again a database which consists of list of valid mobile equipments in the network and the database that keeps record of which are allowed and which are banned in the network this register will be consisting of the valid mobile phone users or the equipment in the network we can say then we have one more device called authentication center that is auc this performs the authentication of the subscriber whether he is a legitimate user or not so these are the five uh, devices or we can say these are the five functional units which are much necessary in a 2g system called gsm then we have pstn in the uh, architecture this pstn connects to msc where this pstn is helpful while we are connecting analog telephone system that is a wired one or we can say that is a fixed telephone system so this is the architecture we have seen first it will be consisting of a mobile station that will be having a sim that is connected to a base transfer transceiver system that base transceiver system will be connected to bsc that is base station controller this base station controller will be having connectivity with msc that is mobile switching center this msc is going to operate with the hlr and also vlr and eir and auc this msc will be also connected to pstn isdn pspdn and cspdn this is what the architecture of gsm which is the most famous technique in 2g in the next video let us see third generation technology what actually the method they are going to use for communicating a wireless devices thank you